everyone. Welcome back to Morning Cup. I am so honored today because I have Robert with me. Robert Lottie Boudreau is a passionate mindset, high performance coach, specializing in helping individuals overcome their mindset blocks and limiting beliefs to achieve their dreams, build highly successful businesses, and live a happier, more fulfilled life. He has always been involved in sports, playing football, and competing in athletics. He spent 15 years as an amateur boxer at a high level, which from an early age gave him a great understanding of what it takes to be elite and perform in a competitive environment. He took those skills, knowledge, and discipline into his career, which has seen his work across a variety of sectors with impressive results. He helped grow the sales teams at Co-op Group, helping to build, develop, and run their two contact centers, including the head office. He then took his experience into the SME sector, helping to grow a small energy company from 10 people to over 100 in just 18 months, while creating and maintaining a culture of excellence and constant improvement. His passion was always in training and developing his teams, and he now spends his time as an international coach and over the years has helped thousands of individuals to achieve their dreams and entrepreneurs and small businesses overcome the mind blocks holding them back from scaling up and making their businesses more profitable. Robert now spends his time helping companies of all shapes and sizes build the type of environments that breed success and helps individuals achieve their dreams. Thank you so much for being here today, Robert. Um, wow, it's a big story, but um, the shorter version, um, you, you know, listen, I I'll go, do you know what? I'm going to go right back to when I was born. <laughs> so <laughs> Perfect. Uh, my parents <clears throat> were Jamaican parents and they came from Jamaica to the UK. And um, my dad joined the RAF. Um, my mum was a nurse as well. And they obviously went off traveling, doing their thing with the Royal Air Force. And um, whilst we were based in Singapore, then I was born. So I was actually born in Singapore. Oh. And um, then from there, we went to Cyprus and Germany and et cetera, et cetera. So after a while, they realized that it was affecting mine and my brother's schooling. And they decided to uh, come out of the RAF and uh, go back to the UK. And they <clears throat> were based in a place called Doncaster. And they it's a small town, but they wanted to bring us up in a big city. So they moved to a city called Leeds, which is in the north of England. And um, that's where I grew up. Now, at that point, that was the sort of late 70s, early 80s, because, yes, I'm that old. And um, unfortunately, and um, at that time, it was a very, very tough area. It was very racist. It was... It was a tough time in the late 70s in, in the north of England, in the UK. And we was just two little boys, two little black kids growing up in this area. And I got picked on mercilessly. Um, and I was literally having to fight my way to school every day. And it was a tough, tough time. It was really, really tough. I haven't got time to go into right now how tough it was, but it was, it was a tough time. And um, I grew up with some really tough kids. And you have to understand that we were two little rough kids, you know, we were very well-spoken, but you've got these two very well-spoken little black boys going into this sort of estate, this, this tough neighborhood. And it was just lambs to the slaughter. And uh, so that happened for a while. And then I started to box and that's where I started to get my love of boxing. I wanted to go and learn how to look after myself. And I just took to it very well and did very, very well out of it. And Cut a long story short, throughout my boxing, um, I very quickly, because I was a very inquisitive child, I used to ask a lot of questions and I very quickly used to look at one boxer and um, as opposed to the other and think, well, why is he better than him when they're both strong, they're both fit, they're both doing the same kind of training? Yeah. And I very quickly worked out that it was not down to skill set, it was down to mindset. Mm. But I didn't know what this mindset thing was. And back then, obviously, there was no internet. There was no, hey, let's ask Google, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, or Siri. Um, so my mother used to always say to me, 
get the Encyclopedia Britannica out and look it up. And I'd have to go and look it up and read about. And I started to study about mindset and the brain and the mind. And, and I found it fascinating. Now, growing up in the area I was in, you couldn't say to your friends, hey, guys, I'm not coming out today. I'm going to stay home and read my books on the mind and the brain. They'd be like, get them out of here you know yeah. it it was just a no-go so <clears throat> I used to study in private and just read this stuff and this was from like you know I was about probably 12 or 13 years of age and then it just carried on and um I just got fascinated with it and I wanted to learn more so after school um I was supposed to go to university in a place called Sheffield and I decided to drop out because I wanted to make money because I never had any. And um, I started working and I went into the world of sales. I did very well at it. I very quickly became a sales manager. Then I went on to run departments and then I worked for corporate and I started to I worked in a corporate um, sales call center. I had 400 staff underneath me. I was doing very, very well. I ran my own businesses as well. And all of this was going on. But whilst all this was going on, Caroline, I, I always had this drive to want to teach others about all this mindset stuff that I'd learned and coach other people. But in those days, there was pretty much, especially in the UK, there was no such thing as coaches. There was um, the only coach I knew of back then was Tony Robbins. And he was still in his very early days back then. This was in the early 90s. Um, and in England, it was unheard of. There was no, nobody spoke about coaches and obviously there's no social media. So even I didn't know what it was, but I just felt this calling to do this thing. However, I had a big mindset block and the block was, I'm just this little black kid with no degree from a council estate, uh, inner city estate, um, Who's going to listen to me? Who's going to pay for me to talk to them about psychological things, about the mind and things like that? And that became a massive block for me, even as I was doing well through my career, even as I had, you know, hundreds of staff underneath me, I still had this block that nobody would listen to me as a coach, but I was coaching every day, right? Right. In my career. Mm -hmm. So that became a limiting belief that held me back, but it held me back for nearly two decades, 18 years. I never did anything about it. So I just carried on working, learning in the world of work. I opened after working in corporate for a while. I then opened my own businesses. I did very well in some. One of them had a catastrophic end. It was terrible. We went bust. Um, but I learned a hell of a lot from that and then built another business and did well in that. But all through all of this, I wanted to coach people. I really did. And uh, I more so, as time went on, I wanted to coach um, um, people who were struggling with their own limiting beliefs and things. But I thought, I can't even get past my own. So how can I do that? Um, and that went on and on. And I left it at that. Then one day, I took some of the leaders in the company that I was working for. I was mm -hmm. sales director of a solar panel company. Mm -hmm. And I took the leaders from there to a three-day seminar of a guy in the UK and his company. And they um, was talking a lot about mindset and things like this to help companies develop their teams. Mm -hmm. And he blew us away. And to cut a long story short, I just thought, oh my, oh my God, I need to speak to this guy. And after the three days, I went and approached him and he ended up being a mentor to me. And um, he ended up freeing me of that mindset block that I had about myself, that limiting belief about being robbed from this estate who nobody had listened to, even though I've been studying this stuff now for literally 20 years, because right. all through that time of working, I've still been learning and going on courses and learning because I was fascinated with human behavior and the mind and why we do what we do so I just studied everything NLP CBT anything I could get my hands on I read it I was a verate, verate, uh, a crazy reader I, I if I could get my hands on it I'd read it mm -hmm. um and he then unlocked over about an 18 month period he unlocked that limiting belief that I had that I couldn't do this and um I sort of just followed him around like a little puppy dog learning and devouring everything and then one day 
Um, lots of things changed in our solar panel market. Mm -hmm. And um, it was it was changing and the market was crashing. And it was a chance to change. And I thought, if I get another job, I'll get stuck in that job as well. I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to start this career as a coach um, after what my mentor taught me. And uh, I started that and that was nearly 10 years ago, about eight years ago now. And I'm fortunate enough now to have worked with people all over the world and help them also unlock their limiting beliefs that are holding them back from doing or achieving whatever it is they want to do. And I'm so passionate about doing that because I, one sentence, I'm just Rob from Bramley and Leeds. That was the area I lived in. Mm -hmm. I'm just Rob from Bramley and Leeds. Nobody's going to want to talk to me. Um, mm -hmm. And that sentence held me back for 20 years, nearly two decades. And I know having worked with, as I say, thousands of people now over the years, um, all of us have got that sentence in us. We've all got that one thing that we repeat to ourselves that's holding us back in some area of our lives. And my mission is to try and help people get past that and overcome that negativity that usually stems from childhood mm -hmm. and help them move forward and do whatever it is that they they have that calling, that pull to do. But mm -hmm. something's telling them, oh, you can't do that. You're you're not educated enough, tall enough, fast enough, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You're not enough, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so that's my mission is to help them and companies move past all that and look at the positivities and at what they can achieve. And that's my driving force. So a yeah. bit of a long answer there for you, but, uh, <laughs> but that was the, 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 the shortened version of my mm -hmm. background that got me here. Well, I appreciate you sharing all of that. And it's just, it's so interesting to hear like more of your story because I've heard bits and parts of your story, but really piecing it together and how much limiting beliefs can really impact us on such a subconscious level because we're not awesome. actively thinking of it or saying it, but internally we might be saying it or believing it depending on the severity, but 20 years is a long time. And I know yeah. I've had limiting beliefs in the past. They come up every time I up level, it starts to creep in and I have to like push it to the side and no, that's not true. And reminding myself, but I love that you use all your knowledge base to create what you've created today. And also I love the fact that you were in solar since I'm in solar now, oh, but, right. <laughs> but I, I think it's interesting how that one person really was able to really shift your mindset and you really worked with them, absorb that information and were open to it. Because a lot of times people might not be open to receiving that information or ready for the change, ready. but you allowed yourself to. And that's mm. huge. It speaks volumes of how you're able to help so many people now. You were helping them before, but your own experience allowed you to really take force of that even though coaching wasn't really big in the UK at first, oh, having you there and being able to work with so many walks of life all over the world. I love that. And I love that you were able to overcome the fact that you were having this limiting belief that you weren't enough and being able to counteract that and look what you've achieved and what you've been able to do and your mission. I really resonate with that. And I think so many other people will too. Yeah. It's been a a journey of love, should I say. Um, and I wake up every morning with massive gratitude that I get to do this every day. Um, it really is, um, uh, I'm grateful for it because I love what I do. And it's one of those cliches, isn't it? Do what you love. But I genuinely get to do what I love and, and every day is a play day for me. Yes. And that's what it's about, right? It's about being mm -hmm. able to enjoy what you do and your passion comes through. Even you talking about it, coaching and overcoming those limiting beliefs that your clients are dealing with as well. So I'd love mm -hmm. for you to share maybe one or two client success mm -hmm. stories with us. Wow. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> I know you have a lot, but if you have one or two that pop up. <laughs> wow. Well, listen, you know, I, I work with individuals. I work with a lot of sports people as well. I work with businesses, small businesses, uh, small to medium sized businesses. There's been a plethora of success stories. There's people, you know, um, an interesting one, actually, is, is um, I had a client come to me, their business turns over 20 million a year. And they came to work with me. And his blockage, believe it or not, was he didn't believe he was good enough to get it to 40 million. 
Mm. And everyone would think, but you're at 20. Why not? You've you've done it already. You made it, you know, he's a very wealthy guy. And um, and it just shows you how once you get a thought in your mind, Mm -hmm. that's it. If the brain believes it, once your subconscious has taken hold of it, it's it's solid and it becomes real for you. And you will Mm -hmm. keep doing the behaviors based on on that that kept him at that level. So we worked together and and, um, went through all the usual stuff that I do with them and um, I looked a lot about, looked into his past a lot as well, because there was a lot of stuff going on there. Um, but this guy now turns over in excess of 50 million. And mm. we were able to come through a lot of stuff, but it wasn't just that. And 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 I don't want that as a success story, because the success story was that this guy mm-hmm. actually, it helped improve his marriage as well, because mm-hmm. there was stuff going on there as well. And he was so focused on the business, he was losing sight of his private life. And um, he was one of um, something that's really dear to me because the, the family is so happy now. Um, so I'm super happy about that. I've got loads of examples of sports people as well. In fact, there was um, one of my um, clients was a female bodybuilder, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, she came to me when she was at a certain level. I think she'd come fifth in Miss Great Britain, um, which isn't bad for some people, um, but it was considered nothing for her. And she had bigger goals and dreams um, than that. And we worked together. She went on to win Miss Britain and then the Europeans and then the world championships. Um, So that was over a two and a half year period. Um, And now we've gone on further than that and now expanded our business, our businesses european and worldwide now and she's doing unbelievably well and this was from someone who was really nervous was quite camera shy as well about going online and doing anything and now she's online every day all the time um absolutely smashing it and i've worked with a lot of people in terms of that as well being able to break that fear of putting themselves out there online and everything else because of their limiting beliefs about how they look how they come across what they say what people will think so there's loads of those stories as well. Um, uh, I could I could go on and on. There's so many. Um, there's there's um, someone I'm working with at the moment as well who just wanted to start a business and they had a massive blockage about that because in their head it was all about you got a good job, mm-hmm. kept your head down, worked till you're 65. That's it. The parents had told them that's the way to go, but mm-hmm. they had a passion for um working um for themselves and this particular person really loved um dogs and Mm -hmm. wanted to set up a um sort of doggy parlor thing where you can leave your dog when you go on holiday but also where they do the shampoo and all that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. um now this person worked in a call center and was quite senior but they were starting to really hate the job and they was getting, um, I've forgotten what it was called, but it's where you get a phobia of being around people. Yeah. And it started to become really um, debilitating for them and they had to take time off work and lots and lots of problems, problems at home, family, relationship, all that. And anyway, cut long story short, we worked together again. And um, over that time, she got the strength and courage to go back to work and then she ended up leaving that job setting up her own um doggy parlor Mm -hmm. and now it is one of the most popular ones in the north of england it's like you can't even it's booking in there's difficult um so that was a really good one for me because of the journey she went on as well so it was really um one that is dear to me as well Those are such amazing examples of the work you've been able to do. And I know you have so many more, but I appreciate each one you shared, even starting with the client that wanted to go from 20 to 40 million and how it improved his whole life. Because being a former therapist, just knowing how powerful our mind can be and our behaviors are so important to see how those transpire, the patterns that we do and being able to counteract those thoughts that we have and put it into action where if we want to change. And it sounds like he was able to really just help his personal life too. And that's so important because it is having that harmony between 
life and business, because it's not just separate entities, especially when you have a family, Mm. it's different. And then even moving into the bodybuilder that you were working with, you know, I could so relate to being on camera and how it's like, what do you say? What do you do? And other clients you've had, especially being a former therapist, like we were taught in school back in the day that don't, everything's confidential. Don't post anything, change your name on social media, like everything to protect your privacy. So your clients didn't find you just because of the confidentiality aspect. Yeah. So I had a really hard time because I was like, well, what, what do I say? How do I, how do I come across? And all of these factors. Now this mm-hmm. is like six years ago almost, but yeah. being able to recognize too how much our thoughts can impact our behaviors, our actions, and how can hold us back so much. But I love that each of your clients have really been able to blossom and mm-hmm. been able to accomplish those goals that they set out and allowing themselves to remove those limiting beliefs and becoming limitless is what I'm hearing as well. So I appreciate yeah. all those stories. Thank you. <laughs> and with all the success you've had, I know there's been some bumps in the road, but what is one lesson learned that you've had <coughs> throughout your journey that really stands out to you? Maybe you have two, but that allowed you to really learn what had happened in your journey to move you forward. There's been a few lessons for me. I've been fortunate that they've not been major, but there's been lots of small lessons along the way that have guided me almost, right? And um, not just lessons, but signs. Mm. And this is a great one that I think anyone who's listening, who's probably thinking about direction, which direction should I go in? Should I, should I leave that job? Should I move house? Should I move state? Should I move city? Should I, should I leave the country? You know, yeah. and they're toying with something. Yeah. I had a really, really bad car accident um, in 2010, I think it was, 10 year, 2011, it was 10, 10 years or so ago, 12 years ago, 11 years ago. And um, I had a head-on collision. I was airlifted to hospital and it was a serious accident. I was off work for the best part of a year and um, um, could have died. Mm -hmm. And I always remember as I was coming around in hospital, because I I could only barely remember the the flight in the helicopter. And then I came around in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And as I came around, I remembered that this was just before I'd started coaching, by the way. So... Mm -hmm. As I've come around, I remember thinking to myself, I almost died and I still haven't, because I was still working in corporate then. Mm -hmm. And I thought I still haven't lived the life I really wanted to live. Even though I was doing okay, I was making good money. I was sales director of this company, but I thought I still haven't lived the life I really want to live. And I almost checked out and it made me think what a, what a sad way to go that you've not done what you wanted to do because of some fear you've got from 20 years ago and you've almost checked out. It's time. It's time to live the life you want to live. And then it was soon after that, that I decided, right, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to do it. And then I met my mentor and the rest was history. So as a lesson, rather than a bump in the, well, that's a big bump in the road, but as a lesson, it serves to everybody to think I'm not going to put it off anymore, whatever it may be. If somebody's listening right now and there's something they're putting off, something that's been niggling away at them for a while, Mm -hmm. it's time to just say, do you know what? If that's important to me, I need to do it now because tomorrow is never promised. So you never know. And that was one of the biggest lessons for me along the journey Mm -hmm. that act now and don't think because tomorrow's not promised. So that's the biggest journey. It wasn't so much a business lesson, Mm -hmm. but it was um, a life lesson. Yes, I got chills when you were saying that because I think it's so true. Sometimes we have these terrible accidents or situations in life and circumstances that really redirect our entire life. I know I've had that experience. I know so many other people where it's really waking up and seeing there's so much more that you want to accomplish, but not waiting anymore. And I think it's just, I wanted to take a second to highlight that because I think people listening to, no matter what it is in life, just not waiting anymore, because you're absolutely right. We don't know 
if we're guaranteed tomorrow. So really living our best lives and really doing what we're passionate about. It's right. It's just yeah. a waste, right? Yeah. You know, um, that's why you was put here. You know, you've got a gift that you was given from God or whoever you believe in. And uh, it's to sit on it because of something that's going on. Yeah. that's telling you I'm not good enough I'm not educated enough I'm not bright enough I'm not whatever mm-hmm. it's such a waste and uh like we say tomorrow's not promised so just just go for it because hey what's the worst that can happen you go back to exactly where you are right now it's not a big deal exactly well put <laughs> with talking about lessons I would love to know maybe two or three tips that you could give entrepreneurs that are on this journey whether they're just starting or they're in the midst of it. I think the first one out that, that that always springs to mind straight away is be true to yourself. Most entrepreneurs I work with, at first, the early ones, they mm-hmm. tend to try and morph into something else. They tend to try and be something they're not or run the business in some way that's not true to them. And it can make the, the business difficult and it can make... um. It's un, unenjoyable. So be true to you. If you feel it and you're passionate about it, because that's hopefully what got you started in that business, keep going. Just be you and believe in what you're doing, your journey. And, and um, in fact, I had a call just before this, this <laughs> podcast with one of um, my clients who we were talking about this in particular, because um, he's on his own journey. But this is so, so important because so many people try and either be like somebody else or emulate someone else or some be you, be true to you because that's what got you going and that's what people will buy into. And I always say mm-hmm. your vibe will bring your tribe, right? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. They, they mm-hmm. will follow your vibe. It doesn't matter. You don't try and be anything else because I tried to do that at the very beginning and mm-hmm. I was... Um, I used to wear a lot of sharp suits and shirts and open neck thing and all this. And it just wasn't me and it wasn't working for me. And as soon as I mm. just became myself and this is who I am, yeah. everything took off for me because mm. my vibe attracted my tribe, people who resonated with me. And a lot of people say they come to me because they just say that I feel real, that they can talk to me. They can be open because I'm a normal everyday guy I'm not a suit I'm not someone who they feel a bit intimidated by or anything I'm just a normal everyday guy so be yourself be true to yourself is one of the main tips that I would give to absolutely anybody because it's so so important especially in business being true to yourself is the number one thing and the other thing I would say to people as well is stay focused on the main goal of the business at any one time so there's a great book the one thing Mm. everybody should read that book it's a game changer it was a game changer for me and um I think it would really help them so with a lot of my clients I tell them stay focused on the one thing and Mm -hmm. that is daily weekly monthly yearly whatever it is stay focused on the one thing and go all in on that And it will change your game because everybody tries to put so many fingers in so many pies and do a lot of things half well, Mm -hmm. do one thing really well and you'll be successful. That's a good point. I go back and forth on that. This might be an unpopular, (laughs) unpopular opinion because I do have, I used to have my hands in a lot of pots, but I do agree. Like when you have, have (laughs) (laughs) but like when you have that focus, I think it's also what you said, the goal, like having the goal in mind of the business allows you to stay focused knowing like things are going to come up throughout the day throughout the week month year but if you have that end goal in mind it allows you to stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish or what you're focused on accomplishing not trying yes absolutely (laughs) stay focused listen don't get me wrong you can work on multiple things but your main focus should be on that one thing yes that's it And every day, wake up and set yourself a goal and say, what's the one thing? If I do this one thing today, it's Mm. been a productive day. What is that one thing? Write it down and say, right, that's what I'm going to get done Mm. today. Then if you get that done quickly, you know, if you've eaten that frog and you do it straight away, hey, there's plenty of other things you can be working on, but Mm -hmm. focus on the one thing. It'll change the game for you. Too many entrepreneurs, too many business owners I work with 
are trying to focus and firefight on 10 million things and they told themselves yeah but i need to rob you don't understand i need to if i don't do that who's going to do it i need to do this i need to do yeah it, and it and the world never ends if they leave them they, it, it mm-hmm. never ends but if you take that one thing and go i'm going all in on that today and i'm going to finish that mm-hmm. It changes the game because you wake up the next day and you think, wow, that's done at last. Mm -hmm. It's done. Now I'm going to do that. And then other things, there's other ways of getting other things done. And um, Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't utilize things like virtual assistants and Mm -hmm. things like that. There's lots of other ways you can pass things off. But a lot of business owners, especially small business owners, they tend to want to do everything and and hold it onto everything. And I did the same in the early days. (laughs) But this is why I know, this is why I learned so much. And uh, mm-hmm. this is what helps me become a good mindset stroke life coach. Um, mm-hmm. Because I've lived, I've done it, I've made the mistakes, I've yeah. I've, I've been there and uh, learned from them. And um, now I'm passing them on to hopefully help others so they don't have to make the mistake. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And I know too, I, I love that you clarified that as well, like focusing on one thing each day to get done for your business. I feel like I do do that. And I think a lot of people have that misconception of like, I have to like, they schedule it out and then like disappointed if they don't get it done because they're focused on so many things. So you're right. It's like really focusing on okay, what needs to get done today because there's always a million things to do, but Absolutely. it's also utilizing and other people, whether it's a virtual assistant or delegating, which can yeah. be, difficult. I used to have a, I used to have a to-do list that was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, oh, trying yes. to take them all off and everything. And, and mm-hmm. and all that happens with them as well is you tend to focus on the ones you like. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Before. Yeah. It's just, it's, again, it's just a mindset. It's like, oh, I'll do that because that's easy and I'll get that done and I'll do it. And then that thing that's glaring at you, you push that to one. Tomorrow, I will definitely get to that tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Just take it and say, today, we're getting done. Me and you. It's me and you. I'm doing this today. <laughs> get it finished. Get it done. Mm-hmm. Spot on, but I've been enjoying this conversation so much, Robert, but we're going to jump into the rapid yeah. fire questions. If you're ready for them. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Let's, let's see. The first question is who is your hero? Oh, that's a big question. I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, if you have a few, you can name a few. <laughs> okay. I'll name a few. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting me off the hook. Yeah. Um, anytime. <laughs> people might be listening to this and going, what about me? Um, <laughs> In business, my hero is Tony Robbins. And it might sound a bit to some people listening, oh, Tony Robbins, oh, yada, yada, you know, because they've all heard of it and everyone's, you know, but love him or hate him, you can't deny what the guy's done. And when I was first starting out and I first got into personal development, he was the first guy I found because, well, 30 years ago, um, there was hardly anybody around doing this game. And he was one of them. And um, I read Unleash the Power Within um, and it blew my mind and um, it set me off there on the path. And that was it. So he's always been like the the guru I've looked up to sort of thing. But um, in terms of my life, my hero has to be my parents um, because they um, they gave me a work ethic that just from watching them and the way that they um, came to this country, grafted, they've they've retired now, one's in New York, one's in Jamaica, they're not together anymore. But um, they came here, they grafted and the ethic that they showed myself and my brother and, and um, you know, that goes a long way. And, and that's what's always driven me is, is their work ethic. And it stopped me from being um, entitled because my life is a lot easier than what they had. And it's very easy to think, hey, I'm making some good money. I've got a lovely home. I live in a beautiful part of the city and, you know, everything's great. And um, I always remember their journey and what they went through to bring us up and give us a great schooling, send us on trips. They were, they were a working class family. They had it tough, but they still sent us on ski trips, which 30 odd years ago, skiing was an expensive, it's expensive now, but yeah. back then, that was serious. And we went skiing. We did lots of things that a normal working class family didn't get to do, but my mum and dad did without. And uh, so they're my hero for that. And my last hero is my partner, Lindsay, who without her, I would definitely not be here today doing this talk with you because she helped me 
get through the early days and especially after my accident she looked after me and everything and uh, um so she's my hero mm. wow just had to like take that in because i love just the differences too of each part of your life and how that has really helped you mold into who you are today and speaking of work ethic what motivates you to work smarter to work smarter mm. um do you know what what motivates me just to work whether it's smarter harder whatever it is is to help as many people as I possibly can one of my um, long-term life goals uh, my long-term goal is to open a charitable foundation mm. for inner city young adults um mm. to help them overcome their limiting beliefs that are holding them back because <clears throat> not just kids but I'm on about young adults maybe anywhere from 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 um because I remember where I was you know, yeah. these inner city, there's a lot of inner city young adults out there who are super talented. They've got mm -hmm. a lot going for them. There'll be people listening to this somewhere right now who um, have maybe kids or it's them listening themselves. The kids are listening themselves. Um, the young adults, they come from a tough background. They're talented. They've got ideas. They've got something burning inside them. But yeah. in their head, they've got this thing going on saying, I don't speak correctly. I haven't got a degree. I've not come from the right background. I didn't grow up in the right area. My parents weren't the right type of parents, you know, um, all these things. And it's stopping them and holding them back. And it's making them make bad choices, some of them as well in life. So that's what drives me. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. That's what makes me be efficient, make the right choices and keeps driving me forward because I want to inspire as many of those people. And one day I want to open my own charitable foundation that helps those people overcome their limiting beliefs to go on and, and achieve something because I was written off so early in my life and, you know, I didn't have a degree or anything and people never thought I'd make anything. And there's a lot of people who, who probably wrote me off and I'm doing better than they are. So it just shows you that if you've got the grit, the determination, that desire, and a strong enough why, you can you can achieve anything you want as long as you put your mind to it and believe in yourself. It really goes back to just believing in yourself, but having someone believe in you as well. I can't wait for your charity to be in the world, but you have to keep me posted on that in any way I can help. Hopefully that's sooner than later where it is up and running and I can just see how many people you can really help that you're already helping, but even more, especially the young adults where they don't yeah. maybe have that influence in their life and being able to have something tangible yeah. for them to go to and really develop all the talents that they have internally, but haven't been able to express or follow or pursue because of their circumstances or the limiting beliefs mostly. Yeah. Mostly it is that because they, yeah they've already checked out mentally. Yeah. They've already said, well, everyone's told me I need X, mm -hmm. Y, Z qualifications or I need this or I'm on the scrap heap. So, right. hey, that's it, forget it. And mm -hmm. some of them will make bad decisions and go down a wrong path, whatever, because they've already been told, hey, you've got, you've got nothing to offer, so why not, you know? So mm -hmm. I know from working with loads of people as well that mm -hmm. they have so much more to offer and um, they could... They could go on and be anything they want. And we've all heard the stories about entrepreneurs who yeah. got no qualifications or um, mm -hmm. they were dyslexic or whatever. And now they're, you know, Richard Branson was famously dyslexic and, you mm -hmm. know, he dropped out of university too. So everyone's got a chance, but a lot of people don't believe in them. So they don't get the guidance, the help. So I want to help maybe mentor them in some way or give them some guidance through a foundation and help those people. So that's my drive. I'm excited for you <laughs> and I can't wait to see it happen. And if you were a superhero, what would be your power or powers? Wow. You know, I hope I'm a good enough person to be a superhero because I don't know. I'd have to keep going on this personal development journey because it'd be so easy to be, um, to allow your ego to get in the way, wouldn't it? If you had mm -hmm. superpowers of some kind. I mean, if I was like Superman and I could fly and I was strong and uh, God knows what I could do. But I'd like to think now I've evolved enough to do some good with that. And um, 
if I was a superhero, I don't know. I'd, 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 I'm not sure what I'd do, but I would use it to help build that foundation, that charitable foundation, and and maybe be able to help far more people than I could ever think of helping now if I was a superhero. So probably something like that. Maybe a bit boring for those people listening, that, that answer, but uh, but it's it's the truth. You know, I think there's only... with. With power, there's only two ways to go. You Because as the saying goes, with power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you can either go down the dark side or you can help people. I'd like to hope that I help people and do some good. Mm -hmm. Well, I think those powers are going to unite to build that foundation. <laughs> and I don't think it's boring. I think it's true at, to who you are and your character. And it speaks volumes. Thank you. Yeah. So if you could share a meal with any four individuals, living or dead, who would they be? Wow, that's a great question. I think, well, Tony Robbins has got to be in there because I'd love to sit across the table. I've been seeing him in many events and stuff, but I've never had the chance to sit down and I'd love to have that time with him to talk. So he'd have to be in there. Um, I would also probably live in or dead. Wow, that goes back in history. There's so many names coming at me. There's so many great mind thought thinkers as well I think Marcus Aurelius would be another one mm. um because I'm big into the Stoics and um mm. I like to study their thoughts and I've got a lot of um books of the uh, Stoic readings and, and writings and stuff and so Marcus Aurelius is one of my favorites so I'd like to have him at the table and pick his brains and I'm fascinated how people who were around in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. were as deep as people who are here now and their knowledge exceeds a lot of people who are here now it's crazy so I'd love to sit and talk with him um and I would also want to speak to my great 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 grandfather mm -hmm. and mother just mm -hmm. to see what life was like yeah. So I would have them at the table because that would be fascinating just to hear what they've got to say and um, have them um, um, be part of that that story as well. And I think the other one would probably be Sigmund Freud mm. or one of the other great um, psychologists, because I'd like to really get into their mindset as well, um, because they were light years ahead of of um of their time as well oh so, that's a powerful table right there <laughs> it's a powerful table it definitely is um and i think uh, i think one of them sorry one of them would also i'd have to have room for another one and that'd be course, martin <laughs> yeah i'd have martin luther king there as well because i'd love to sit and talk to him and hear about the ins and outs of what happened when he was around and and uh, he was such a great orator as well and i'm big into the world's best speakers i love listening to them and how they present themselves and uh I'd love to just hear his tales of what went on um, back in the day, so to speak, and uh, how how he found that and how he found the courage to to have that journey and go through everything that he went through. So, yeah, definitely Martin Luther would have to be in there. I'm going to have to join this table. It's too it's good great. to pass up. <laughs> That'd be a great table. You'd leave learning so much, though, wouldn't you? Off that yes. Table. What is the most daring thing you've ever done? Wow. Um, I've done, I've never jumped out of a plane or anything like that. Um, but I used to do off-road rallying, oh. um, the, the real off-road rally stuff. And um, mm -hmm. that's probably it. It's not that exciting, but <laughs> when you're in a car hurtling down um, back tracks and uh, dirt roads, at 80 mile an hour it's pretty hair raising trust me no I'd say that's probably it unfortunately I've never like some some of my friends have done um gliding and mm -hmm. jumping out of planes and all that sort of stuff parachuting it's not for me unfortunately <laughs> but, uh, that's about as scary as it gets for me I, I like the thrill of fast cars I like mm -hmm. a bit of rallying and stuff so yeah that's it for me and boxing I suppose is quite daring too. Stepping into that ring is a different kind of mindset it takes to go in there. I fully agree from watching from the outskirts of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, more power it's serious to it. Ball. <laughs> serious ball. And now I get to work with lots of boxers as well mm-hmm. and help them overcome them limiting beliefs because they've all got them as well we've all got them haven't we so um it's uh it helps me a lot having boxed myself to work with boxers and help take them to the next level so anthony joshua if you're listening out there somehow if you get across this this um (laughs) this podcast at all hit me up because i can help you i know i can and what is the phone app that you use the most oh wow um I use so many, Caroline. I use so many. <laughs> um, you put me under pressure. I don't know. Probably, do you know, because of my job, it probably would be my social media. It, it, mm-hmm. As boring as it sounds, I'm on it all the time. I have to be. Um, I'm always posting on Instagram, face, probably between Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn is my most. Um, and um, probably WhatsApp because I have uh, groups as well. Um, so, yes as dull i haven't got any great hackable thing that i can there, there's there's so many great apps out there but yeah i i literally live on those apps so mm-hmm. it has to be them it's where businesses it's where your people are it all makes sense where you it's know? all that clients it's all. everything <laughs> yeah and i like to really engage as much as i can even as i'm mm-hmm. getting more um getting busier and bigger now it's yeah. you know I don't want too much of the team helping clients. I like to, where I can, mm-hmm. engage directly with clients as much yeah. as I can for as long as, as I possibly can before it gets absolutely too much. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think it's boring. I think social media is a direct way to connect also with your audience and being able to help others, even if it's a quick tip. And I know you put out a lot on Instagram as well of just constant, amazing content for others to benefit from hearing you. Hey, look, hey, look, we met on social media. Yeah, yeah, we did on Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, Clubhouse, you see? We wouldn't yeah. be doing this if it wasn't for a social media platform. Exactly. See, it's all about connecting. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the last book that you've read or listened to? Um, well, I was reading the one thing, um, but mm-hmm. the book I'm reading at the moment for the second time is The Obstacle is the Way. Oh, that's a good one. It's a good one. Mm-hmm. I Definitely to recommend that. that to anybody who's listening. Um, the Obstacle is the Way, which again is very much mindset and it's mm-hmm. about overcoming your thoughts about things that are holding you back or the obstacle that's holding you back or that may be in the way that you think is the obstacle. I've not got enough money. I haven't got the resources or whatever it is. It's mm-hmm. a fantastic book. I fully agree. <laughs> and so if you were to have a movie about your life thus far, who would <clears throat> play you? Ooh, good question. <laughs> For me, it has to be Denzel. Oh, Denzel Washington. I can see it. <laughs> It'll be Denzel for me. It's yeah, he's uh he's he's my guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's a powerful actor. One of my favorites, yeah. actually. Yeah, I'd be happy to see that. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be very humbled to see that. That'd be great. <laughs> well, it might happen. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your favorite family recipe, whether it's a traditional one or you love making it together? Family recipe. Well. There's um, a Jamaican porridge called oatmeal porridge, mm. and it's unbelievable. Um, can't really explain it on here, but it's it's made from oatmeal rather than orange oats, and um, it's absolutely gorgeous. And my mum, you know, when I was growing up, my mum used to always make it occasionally, and uh, I loved it. And um, my partner now my fiance Lindsay she's learned how to make it and she makes it almost as well as my mother now and uh, and uh, I have to say that for my mother in case she's listening but okay. <laughs> actually probably a little bit better but um <laughs> but uh she makes it absolutely beautifully and that's the kind of family thing um there's loads of other meals and recipes that we have but there's there's um it holds fond memories for me when I eat that that porridge of being young and mm-hmm. uh, um, carefree, should we say. Yes. It's mm. what food does. It's like good for the soul, but it just brings it back. Those like childhood memories are just like really good 
energy around it as well. Absolutely. It's like a well-being thing for me. It is fantastic. It's deep. Just for porridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds amazing. And so if you had to describe yourself as an animal personality type, what animal would you be? I'd be a lion. Mm. I'm a lion. I'm the king of the jungle. Um, but I can be playful and roll around like you see them with their cubs sometimes and everything and playing. So mm. I'm the lion. I'm I'm strong and um, get things done, but I like to play. I've got a little four-year-old daughter as well. And, you know, and I even let her put makeup on me and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, go on. Then. You can put nail varnish on me if you want to um, uh so i've got that soft side but uh i like to get shit done so to speak so mm -hmm. the lion i think is first thing that came to mind i think it perfectly describes you as well mm -hmm. <laughs> personality type so yeah. if you have a day off which you might not but what is your favorite way to spend that day off um if i have a day off to be fair <laughs> my go-to thing is the gym um I I do that on days that are not days off anyway but um mm -hmm. even when I'm chilling I like to go to the gym relax and that's my downtime believe it or not yeah. um um <clears throat> the well-being side of things is very important I go there I like to stretch off take a lot of time even on my rest days I call it active rest days so it's going there stretching doing some breath work um and just relaxing and really getting centered and ready and clearing my mind because I've got so much going on um I've got an event coming up soon as well and there's lots happening so the gym is my time to just put some headphones on have some um chilled out kind of meditative meditative music going on mm -hmm. and I just either run for like five or 10k is my max um or I'll be stretching or whatever and just just relax and chill and have some me time helps with the mindset right <laughs> absolutely because it's I teach this to my clients so I have to do it myself it's so important to have that mm -hmm you time and check out whatever it is that you do but it's important to have that time I think it's that mind body connection is so key with everything yeah. but what is something an outsider wouldn't know about your industry an outsider wouldn't know about my industry wow um I don't know is an answer to that I don't know what wouldn't they know I mean I'm a coach do they know what a coach is do they know what we do do we know what we they probably wouldn't know how we can help them because a lot of people when they first come to me they even say to me um I'm not sure why I'm here I don't know if you can help they all start like this you know I don't mm -hmm. know if you can help but I've seen some of the stuff you've done for other people and I just think you might be able to help me, but yeah. I don't know what you do. And they all say I'm a bit nervous, but, mm -hmm. and then I just go relax. Just tell me your situation, why are you here? And then they just go when it comes out. And so I think most people from the outside wouldn't, wouldn't know what I do. They don't know what I do. And especially because I'm kind of considered to a lot of people as a life coach mm -hmm. and then as mindset coach. And I just, I don't like titles. If I had my way, I wouldn't have a title. I'm life strategist, whatever, you know, I've got 54 years, unfortunately, of experience. And I like to help people in any way I can move forward in their lives. And that's it. So a lot of people don't understand what I do. So I think that would be the thing. A lot of people have assumptions or misconceptions about coaching, but really yeah. just what you said in the beginning too, you show up as you and you're there to support and help them through whatever the life challenges that they're going through around limiting beliefs, of course, mostly. And, I, other and this is, and this is why titles, I don't like titles because yeah. as soon as you put a title on something, every individual has a different um, mm -hmm. idea about what that right. means to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And you could say mm -hmm. the word life coach and mm -hmm. some people go, oh, brilliant that sounds great or some people go oh god another one of that oh god right. is everybody a life coach you know mm -hmm. um mindset coach oh what does that mean oh you one of them you're a psychologist oh you're a shrink you're this you're that you're the and 
it, <laughs> everyone's got an idea about what it is and it can be based on their background or their mm-hmm. socioeconomic background based on their upbringing based on anything could have a detrimental um thought about that one title or whatever so I just you know if I could Caroline mm-hmm. I just yeah. I'd just have a title as I help people done <laughs> Done. Done. I like and it. Then, <laughs> then they can have their own misconception, whatever, because they just think for each individual, they'll just think, oh, he helps me. So that's it. Simple to the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That I never thought about that before. Maybe I need to look into that. I just I help people. Maybe that should be my bio. Mm. I help people. I, I might look into that. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you find out. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> But Robert, I've been enjoying this conversation so much. You are such a wealth of knowledge, your beautiful soul. And I so appreciate you taking the time to come on. Where can people find you, hire you? I'm going to link everything below. But if you could let us know too. Um, They can get me on all the socials we talked about before. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. I'm every, I'm, I'm new on TikTok, but I'm in there. Um, So I'm on all of them. It's either Rob Latty. R O B L A T T I or R Latty um, on most of them. But if you put my name in, they'll find me everywhere. So should be fine, should be easy enough to find me, especially with my surname, if they can spell it, that is. <laughs> well, we'll have the re- correct spelling underneath as well. But thank you again, Robert, for everything you shared thank today. You. I know I appreciate it. But make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. What was the biggest takeaway from Robert today? He gave us so many insights of his journey, but something that you took away. And we'll see you on the next video.